Hello and welcome to a new free plugin for Final Cut Pro 10 and we've got a little tutorial that goes with it. It's called Slide with Gap. It puts a gap between the sliding transitions that you can adjust. It's really easy to use and we've got a tutorial on how we made the plugin in motion. Okay, let's take a look at the plugin in Final Cut Pro 10. And as you can see, we've got a nice beat shot here. And as contrast, we've got some tomatoes being cooked. Okay, now this is a transition. Slide with gap is a transition. So you'll find that in the transition browser. So I'll click on this icon here. All that is Command 5, as you'll see from the tooltip. And all I do is just drag that on like that. And as you can see, we've got the effect happening already. Just get rid of the transition browser and also open up the inspector. Got some controls on here. We've obviously got right to left and left to right. So at the moment, that's right to left and you can go left to right. Let's leave it on left to right. And you can see behind here, we've got a drop zone. By default, I thought I'd toggle that one on because I think this is how, you know, how people are going to use it mainly. So that's actually toggled on. So let's put something in drop zone. I'm going to click on the drop zone and go up here, click on this nice picture of the interior of the house, apply clip. And there you can see the plugin in action. It does a transition between the two, a horizontal push uh, with a gap in the middle. Now you can actually control how big that space is and it goes all the way from zero right up to 1920. So by doing that, you get a full frame right in the middle of the item in the drop zone. But let's put that back to 960, which is obviously half and show you how to do the drop zone. Let's park it in the middle. Let's say we want to reframe that drop zone. That's not a problem. All you have to do is double click on the picture I'm just going to shrink that back and you can move that to wherever you want. Let's say, let's concentrate on the table and then click outside. And there we have shift Z to get that full screen in the viewer. And there you have concentrating on the table. Now it works for still images. It, it also works for video. Let's just prove that by clicking, clearing that. And we'll go, let's go to right about here and apply clip of the clouds. Exactly the same thing happens. And as you can see, it's moving, the clouds are moving in there. So it's up to you whether you want to use um, a still image or video, they both work. There is another way of working it, and I'll show you that as well. In this example, we've got the same two bits of video, the tomatoes and the beach, and we've got the drop zone waiting there. Um, but I'm not going to use the drop zone this time. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to toggle it off. So I go up to the inspector and turn it off. And underneath, we've actually got some graphics. So you could build something up um, if you're doing something repetitive or doing chapters, that could be nice. You could do it a bit slower and have the um, and have the graphics reveal. Now, it doesn't have to be a graphic. I can, I can put anything underneath there, like take these rocks and put that underneath. It basically makes a hole that you can show. Again, I can click on here, push everything right up so it's the maximum, and that will do the slide and you get a full, full image in between the two slides. A couple of other things to note on here. Um, the acceleration, um, it does that nice acceleration, the S curve. You can actually turn that off and just have a completely linear move should you want. I mean, I think they look pretty ugly, but that might suit something that you've got, but I tend to leave that uh, all the acceleration up on there. And as we said, the, the last control, it does right to left and left to right. So you've got two choices of animation there. So let's take a quick look in motion on how the plugin was built. And you probably guess I did start with a blank transition from the browser and that opened up. And I think I made it about 30, 31 frames. It doesn't really matter. It's also 1080, but that's going to scale up to um, UHD, whatever, without any quality loss, because there's nothing in there that's going to lose the quality. So let's have a quick look. As you can see, we've got the green to red transition. The green is the outgoing layer in motion and the red is the incoming. It doesn't matter what you do between you know, the front and the back, as long as you start on the green full frame and end on the red full frame, you can do whatever you like in the middle there. As you can see, we've got this transition and it gives an even better example of the distance between the two, if I actually put that in the middle. There you go, that's actually perfect. So that's 1920 pixels uh, apart and it can, can go right down to zero and back up again. Whatever you want. You might be a custom graphic you want to get in there, the size or something. Now, how have we actually done it? First of all, let's explain this big gray box. What is that? Now, that's actually the drop zone. 
And because we've gone for a 16 by 9 frame, because we're doing a 16 by 9 video plugin, we've actually made the drop zone as big as you can left to right so that fills. So you don't actually get any cut off on there. I mean, drop zones always can be, they're always a bit fiddly in, in Final Cut and Motion. I don't know why. Um, and there are, you know, they start off as square by default, but you can crop them on there. Okay, that's fairly good. You can see the controls we've got here, right to left and left to right. And how do we do that? Now, you might say, well, that's easy because what you do is you just rig different parameters to go left to right. You can do that. And if we open up the rigs and have a look, I've actually done that. But what I've done is I've actually done double layers. So I've got right to left group and left to right group. And in the rig, it's basically altering the opacity. So there's two lots of things that happen. And I did that because it's the maths gets a bit complicated when you when you try to do it the other way around with one slider. So because I've got the slider for the distance between the two, as you can see, I've got stuff happening, you know, around here. You know, you know, with minus two six nine eight pixels apart at the moment, it goes down to nineteen twenty and then goes up to three eight four zero. This is a bit complicated. If you wanted to try and do it, but put them in the other way round and still have one slider, you could almost have to rig one version to a slider and then rig the slider to another version to give you just one control for the distance. So I thought that was going to be easier to have one slider there and then have a um, choice between just going right to left and left to right on that drop down on there. You do actually get three choices by default on, on there. So I've just I've just disabled one, you know, delete, deleted one on there to make it neater uh, on there. And because these are duplicates, what I did is I did my normal trick of just um, taking the original layers and turning them off in a, in, in a layer and then doing, um, as we can see here, clones, and we've got the ramps and those ramp behaviors as you can see here are the things that are rigged to do the distance between the frames if that makes sense on there and because they're a ramp it gives you the acceleration the curvature I'm not too sure if curvature is the right phrase but i call it acceleration and then that gets rigged into the acceleration rig as you can see there so whether you want just kind of like a straight move with no acceleration or that lovely s curve um, which i much prefer that goes into there as well and that's about it in the motion project. It's really quite simple. Uh, I thought I'd only do the left to right. You could, of course, put a few more layers in here. You could have a top to bottom or bottom to top layer. Um, you probably have to do another rig for the distance because it's going to be different. It's going to be 1080 between the two frames and not 1920. Um, but you could actually put that in. Uh, you just wouldn't have the end stops. You'd have zero, but somewhere along the line, you'd have a 1080 one there. Um, but that's about it. And as always, it's a free plugin. You can download it from the Industrial Revolution site right now and start using it in any project you want to. Um, we've got lots more coming along, so please drop a subscribe, ring the bell, whatever you do. I mean, I call it YouTube begging these days, but it does help the algorithm. Um, lots more coming, so see you on the next one. Bye-bye.